Herodotus was born in 484 BC. Four centuries later, Cicero dubbed him the father of history. Herodotus was born in Halicarnassus, probably became a merchant traveling the world, researching ancient cultures and customs. He was well known in Athens, the birthplace of democracy. Herodotus was the first writer who spent his life investigating other cultures of the Eastern Mediterranean, as well as the Persian Wars which occurred during his life. What follows are excerpts from his book, The Histories. Herodotus here presents his research so that human events do not fade with time. May the great and wonderful deeds, some brought forth by the Hellenes, others by the barbarians, not go unsung, as well as the causes that led them to make war on each other. Regarding Babylon, I shall describe their customs, beginning with the one I consider the best, which I hear is also still followed among the Anatwa of Illyria. It used to be observed once each year in every village. All the girls of marriageable age were assembled together in one place, and a crowd of men would form a circle around them while an auctioneer had the women stand up one by one and sold them, beginning with the most beautiful. When this young woman was sold for a large amount of gold, he would then put up for sale the second most beautiful. The women were sold for the purpose of marriage. All the wealthier Babylonian men at marriageable age would try to outbid each other for the prettiest girls. The more humble among them did not seek beauty in the women they bid for because the homelier ones came with a monetary reward as an incentive for someone to marry them. And when the auctioneer finished selling the most beautiful of the young women he had the most unattractive stand up, or a crippled girl, if there was any among them, and these would be offered for sale with the announcement that they would go to whoever would accept the smallest amount of gold and marry them and the auction would continue this way until the last woman was finally matched up with the man who agreed to accept the least for her. The gold for these arrangements came from the sale of the most beautiful girls, and thus the attractive provided the dowries to help marry off the unattractive and crippled. Any groom couldn't take away the young woman he had bought until he had appointed a guarantor, who would ensure that he would marry her. If the couple could not get along, it was customary to pay back the gold. This was their finest custom, however it is no longer observed. For after the Babylonians had been conquered by the Persians, they were ruined and became impoverished, so that now every common who cannot make a living prostitutes his daughters. The Egyptians say that the Phoenicians abducted two priestesses from Thebes, one sold to Libya, the other to the Hellenes, and that the two women became the first founders of oracles among these peoples. The manners and customs established by the Egyptians are at least in most respects completely opposite to those of other peoples. For example, the women of Egypt go to the marketplace and sell goods there while their men stay at home and do the weaving. Here the men carry loads on their heads and the women bear them on their shoulders. Women urinate standing up, men sitting down. They relieve themselves inside the house, but eat out in the streets and justify this with the explanation that one ought to take care of the base necessities in private, but those that are not base in public. At drinking parties of wealthy Egyptians, they always follow the end of their dinner by having a man carry around a corpse made of wood inside a coffin. As the man displays it before each of the guests he says, look at this as you drink and enjoy yourself, for you will be like this when you are dead. King Croesus asked Solon of Athens, if he, the king was happy. Solon replied, you seem to be very wealthy, and you rule over many people, but I cannot yet tell you the answer you asked for until I learn how you have ended your life. You see, the man who is very wealthy is no more happy and prosperous than the man who has only enough to live from day to day. For many wealthy people are unhappy, while many others who have more modest resources are fortunate. The wealthy man can only gratify his passions and sustain himself through adversity. But the fortunate man avoids adversity, has no injury or painful experiences. What he does have is good children and good looks. Now, in addition to those things, if he ends his life well, he alone deserves to be called happy and prosperous.
Whenever a Scythian slays his first man, he drinks some of his blood. He brings the heads of all those he slays in battle back to the king, and by bringing back a head, he receives a share of whatever plunder has been taken. But if he does not bring back a head, he receives nothing. Regarding the Christonians, each man has many wives, and whenever a man dies, a great contest with fierce rivalry is held among his wives and their families concerning which of them was the wife whom he loved the most. The woman who is judged most worthy of this honor is eulogized by both the men and the women, after which her closest relative cuts her throat over the grave and she is buried with her husband. The other wives consider ejection a terrible misfortune and the greatest possible disgrace. During his reign, Darius summoned the Hellenes of his court and asked them how much money they would accept for eating the bodies of their dead fathers. They answered that they would not do that for any amount of money. Later, Darius summoned some Indians, called Kadetiae, who do eat their dead parents. In the presence of the Hellenes, he asked the Indians how much money they would accept to burn the bodies of their dead fathers. They responded with an outcry, ordering him to shut his mouth lest he offend the gods. Well, then, that is how people think. So the Athenians had increased in strength, which demonstrates that an equal voice in government has beneficial impact not merely in one way but in every way. The Athenians, while ruled by tyrants, were no better in war than any of the peoples living around them. But once they were rid of tyrants, they became by far the best of all. Thus it is clear that they were deliberately slack when repressed, since they were working for a master. But that after they were freed, they became ardently devoted to working hard so as to win achievements for themselves as individuals. The book which Herodotus wrote was very popular in Athens and throughout the known world. Two centuries after its writing, Alexander the Great, and later the Romans, studied the histories. At 800 pages, it's a comprehensive look at the cultures and customs of the ancient civilizations. The second half of the histories told the story of the Persian Wars, with kings at seas and the Hellens engaged in epic battles the likes of which the world has never seen, before or after. Look for ITM's video on Herodotus, the Persian Wars.